up for morning, you guys. Oh my goodness, if you could smell the smells. If you could reach through the screen with your nostrils and take a big old whiff, you'd smell a lot of good stuff. You'd smell some sweet clover. If you see that yellow back there behind me, you'd smell some sweet clover. You'd smell a little alfalfa lingering from cutting hay last night. <sighs> I can't even begin, I guess. I guess I need to just start with a big thank you to you guys. A big thank you for being so supportive uh, through the drought season. You know, we've had three really hard years here on the ranch um, doing that drought cycle. I've mentioned before in past videos, every 20 years you get a three-year cycle here. That's been the case since the 60s. And this is my first time really getting to experience one as like an adult trying to make things work, you know, here on the ranch. It's been it's been weeks and weeks of rainy weather, just rain, 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 more rain than I can remember getting in in many many years. Such a relief. The pastures are green. The pastures are lush. They're tall. The cattle are fat after two winters of just scraping by and scraping through. But I think we've cut more hay in the last day and a half than we cut the entire last year. You've been really supportive um, in your in your kind comments of encouragement of pressing on, persevering. Um, also, I know there's been a lot of a lot of praying and a lot of uh, well wishing going on out there for us to uh, to survive all this, and it seems that we have. So the plan for today, I want to bring you guys along as we go out and we cut some hay for a couple of reasons. Two reasons. The first reason is we've had so much moisture, just steady, constant rain, and because of that, the hay has. And I'm not complaining. This is not. A, I will never complain about the rain again, ever. Ever. Mark my words, if I complain about the rain, I'll reference back to this point in this video and I'll repent and change. The hay has kind of uh, over ripened, so to speak, a little bit in places. The second reason that we're cutting like the wind is because I've got NASCAR up in Loudoun, New Hampshire. So I've got to hustle, hustle, hustle and try to get as much of the haying done as we can before I got to leave for a week because I really hate to leave Rooster uh, shorthanded. That's where this guy comes in. Ah, oh, there's some sunshine. This little machine right here, this is a rotary mower. See, it was always my dream to have two machines so that we can, we're always looking for like quicker ways just to get things done. So we can either move on to the next project or we can have a little more time with family or whatever. But when we have the, the manpower, <sighs> the man, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, we have the manpower. I thought it would be amazing to have two machines, two cutters. Uh, Cutting the hay down is always kind of the bottleneck of the operation. Uh, when we start baling the hay, that goes really fast. Um, raking the hay goes really fast, but cutting is always a bit of a bottleneck. We can only use it until it's time to start baling hay. Once it's time to start baling hay, we don't have enough tractors to keep this machine going. So in usually it takes about four days for the hay to dry. So the idea is cut with two machines for four days straight, just go wild knocking down stuff. And then when that when the hay that we cut on day one is ready to begin baling, I will unhook this machine and park it till next year. So it's only a machine that we need for three to four days out of the year. And that's, again, that's why I bought it. It was just as a backup machine so that we could have a four-day run with two machines going. Um, you know, if, if Rooster happened to break down or something, then we'd have to, we'd have to make some arrangements and get this thing going again. If, uh, if his big mainliner broke down. But anyway, um, I'm going to grease this thing up and then we're going to go out. I'm going to try to get some drone shots and me and Rooster out there uh, cutting away. Hopefully things go smooth today. Really want to get a big day in today, get a big day in tomorrow. Um, it's pretty early in the morning. I came over here and Rooster has already greased his machine, fueled it, and he's out in the field. So I'm feeling a little bit slackerish. However, in my defense, I was up early editing a video to try to get another YouTube video up for y'all, so. <laughs> anyway.
nice and easy. So the only issues I've had with this rig basically, other than just typical little maintenance items, is each year I've had, I've lost a conditioner roller bearing. One each year, but so far this year we're good. So they all seem to be holding up. These, there's, there's two on each side. There's a lower and an upper. Sometimes you can't quite reach the grease points. So you gotta roll the old girl around. <laughs> and they spin these big rubber rollers that are called, it's called a conditioner. This one's a little old. As you can see, there's a little gapage there, but it still gets her done. Still the last the most important parts on these machines are U-joints. Okay, see here we've got four of them. One, two, three, four. They need grease every single day. Every day, every day, every day. There's four there. There's one in here. There's one in here. There's two inside there that we got already. And then there's two here. For the PTO just runs a, runs a gear in here that comes up and spins another gear inside this box. And that shaft runs all the way through that channel to the back. And then here's the little cutters. Rotary, so this is basically like a giant lawnmower. Okay, so when I was cutting yesterday, I noticed that I was missing a little hay here. So this guy's pretty wore out. They call these a turtle. These are the blades that go on the turtles. Here's an old blade as well. Let me, uh, I've replaced a couple already. This is a new blade, so let me show you a new blade versus an old blade. That's the kind of wear you're looking at out there. <laughs> Isn't that wild? This is what happens when you got crazy friends and neighbors. Give you the old buzz. <laughs> Oh boy, look at that one. <laughs> Another cool thing about these blades, I'm not sure, I, this toolbox came with the swather, but they've got some used blades that have had very little use on them. When this edge wears off, you can flip them over and they're made to use this edge. So they're made to be flipped. Pretty smart thinking, John look Deere. Look at all that mud, you guys, man. The gophers, uh, the gophers out here are <laughs> wild. Had the little nieces come out and my sister was here and helped uh help dig some mud out look at all that yeah. all right them are out got a bunch of freshies in there i think that'll take care of our business my uh, increasingly least favorite comments is people are like i'm done with this guy look at this man bun what an idiot why are you look so dumb what a man bun i'm like hey ding dongs i got something for you what am I supposed to do with my hair when I'm trying to do things like this? I'm all in here digging around and I can't see anything. So I'm like, okay, hair out of my eye. Then I turn my head this way and then I turn it back and that's all it takes. Now I can't see anything. So the easy solution is you put your hair back, you pull it back, okay? Everyone's all freaky about man buns because all the hipsters were wearing them back in the time. I'm like, they're very functional. They serve a very good purpose. So, no more man bun comments. Unless you have a good solution, other than cut your hair, uh, if you got a good solution or something else I can try, I'm happy to try. I always comment back. I say, well, give me another option. No one ever responds. <laughs> Ruchel. Hey, buddy. Found you. Another YouTube going on. Ooh. What's the plan? Well, I've been out swapping for a few hours out there. I'm just... No, I came over. I mean, it wasn't early, early, but you already gone. Fueled up. Fuel that? Or you gotta fuel. I didn't fuel because you want me to suck that oh, down yeah. dry before you do it. Uh, I'm just doing some real heavy sodded stuff, so I don't have to worry about sinking in, oh. hoping that other fuel will dry up when you get into it. Okay. But it's unbelievably heavy. I'm swapping on the north side of that cross fence, kind of by the oh, yeah. reservoirs. Uh -huh. Just make it. A it looked pretty thick yesterday. Pretty wild. Irrigated thing. And watch alfalfa and see clover. Darn headlights on. Yeah. 
Probably means he's been out since before daylight. Can't keep a good man down, can you? <laughs> good old rooster. Hup, old rooster. Come on. <laughs> I better hustle and get out ahead of him. <laughs> to the hair situation. Here's another one. You sit inside this cab. I should get these windows tinted. I haven't, but kind of becomes like a greenhouse in here, even with the AC on. I mean, the AC blows cold, but you get a lot of sun coming through here. It gets hot. And all that hair on your neck also gets hot. So naturally, to get the hair off of your neck, you would lift it up, put your hair up. It's called putting your hair up. So this stuff you see here as we're heading out to the field, these are our pastures. Just to give you an idea, our pastures this year, and this is a pasture that was grazed on actually. <laughs> uh, we had cows on this pasture, you know, well into the springtime, and then we pulled them off just to let, just to rotate it and let it start growing up again. But to illustrate this point, if you've been on this journey for the last three years, this windrow right here that dad cut out of our pasture is way thicker and heavier than any hay we've cut on the ranch in the last two years. That's another designated pasture across the fence, on the far side of the fence there. That's probably the heaviest hay we have on the ranch right now, and that's a pasture. Let me just walk you through here a little bit to show you out here. Of course it's hard to tell the height and stuff but uh you remember in some years past i think it was actually two years ago for anybody that was around way back then i came out when it was near what would typically be haying season and the hay was up to my just up over my boot check this out now there's my boot a lot of the hay is coming in Oh, thigh-ish. This is magical grass that I don't know the name of. It comes up to my, up to my sternum. Looking good, y'all. Looking real good out there. Here's a little pristine water tank for you. Oh yeah. The waters. Okay, we're rolling. You'll see a little spot up here. A rooster made the outside rounds yesterday. And he goes, man, I got a little wet, almost got stuck. <laughs> you can see where he kind of almost got into the fence there, just started sliding sideways on him. One good thing about this tractor and cutting with this machine is that I got a lot more grip, of course, with these uh, tractor tires, and I can get in and out of wetness a lot easier than he can. It's probably 90% alfalfa, 10% grass. So. We're just going right along, no issues, no problems so far. Those new knives that I put on uh, are really making a difference so far, I can tell already from, from what we were cutting last night. So I'm gonna keep making rounds here and it won't be too long. I bet Rooster will come over and uh, carve in with me here a little bit and we'll uh, put a knock some hay down today, boys and girls. Hey, it's me again. Cool little tidbit I forgot to tell you about. These style of mowers, these rotaries, they are made to knock hay down much faster than a sickle type that has the cutters that go back and forth. Now, I'm not going as fast as this machine could go because I don't want to torture my machine and push it to its max limits. Just like I don't do that with my trucks. I don't do it with my, with my swath or my cutter. But uh, the downside of these things and their speed is that they don't cut grass nearly as well. They cut, let me clarify that. They cut any any plant that has a stem, a hollow stem that cuts really well. And that allows it to go really fast. Anything you cut that doesn't have a stem, like for example, crested wheatgrass is such a fine stem that it uh, doesn't, it's not actually really hollow. Tech. I mean, under a microscope it's hollow, but out here. So here, sorry, I'd open the window, but it'd be so loud you wouldn't be able to hear anything. So here we're cutting, it's just, you can see behind me, it's a nice clean cut. Very little grass in this crop, mostly alfalfa. See that bright streak behind me back there? That's crested wheat, it didn't quite cut it all the way to the ground. Where it got in this pure, straight, gonna leave a little snip. Sorry, rooster. <laughs> That's what I get for filming and cutting. Anyway, this is good, you guys. This is one of our smoother fields, so once I get the, kind of get the hang of things again for today, we'll, we'll really get after it. This Here's one of the downsides of a pull type. See how to drive on the hay there. When you're making these first outside rounds, you're, you're dealing with very limited space. 
and uh, you end up driving over your crop a little bit here a and there. A lot of uh, operating machinery has to do with listening. You just really got to become a good listener. Uh, as much as you want to just put the headphones on or put the earbuds in, crank the tunes, you've got to get so used to what a proper sounding machine runs like. What's the, what's the typical hum, the thrum of the engine? What's the normal vibrations under your feet from the PTO shaft running out the back of the tractor? What are the blades supposed to sound like when they're just cutting nice and clean throughout Alpha? You've got to really get that baseline established in your mind through your ear. And then that's when, if something goes awry, you'll know immediately because you go, something, something sounds different. All right, so this E stand is a little muddy. You can see some tracks. I don't know if the video is picking that up, but uh, it is a little wet. Well, I don't know. The deal on wetness, you can kind of see my tracks there a little bit. It's not, it's just leaving tracks. It's not leaving ruts by any means at all. The, the alfalfa is completely dry. You know, the crop itself, the ground is, is wet. One other reason I want to, uh, this might answer some of you guys' questions out there too, but one other reason I want to cut this even though it's a little borderline wet on the ground, is that this is straight alfalfa. If I cut it now, while the ground is extremely wet, there'll probably be enough moisture in the ground to help restart this alfalfa, to perhaps get a small second cutting off of it later. Yeah. There's something out here. What is it? I see it running through the brush. Oh! Stinking porcupines. Yeah! Hey, bub. Get out of here. Looky there, y'all. I'm gonna go for a little swim. Ooh! Get on out to the neighbors. Yeah! Get out of here. Oh, rainy day, woman. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we'll see here. This hay is thick enough. It can take a pretty good shot of rain before the moisture actually gets down to the ground, you know? So I'm going to keep cutting. Keep her moving. I mean, it's not like a settled in. It's just like a, you see the sky and big old Montana skies. We'll see. Rooster's, uh, he's about a mile west of me cutting and he shut her down. But we're just getting kind of the edge of it here. So. The one good thing about a big old rainstorm is that the oats are going to grow. <laughs> This out here is a hay field that we tore up this year. It was just completely shot from the drought. There's just nothing out there. So we tore it up uh, early in the spring, planted some oats as a rotational crop. We'll cut those for hay probably the last very tail end of July. But back to the, the rain. Yes, it got rained out. It got rained out. The ground is so, so full of moisture. <laughs> it just ain't taking much. This was some stuff we cut the other day. It might be ready to bale tomorrow afternoon, unless whatever that is comes and dumps another inch of rain. But like I said, y'all, never gonna complain about the rain again. So for now, I'm hoofing it back in. Actually, I've got a vehicle up here in a little bit, but I had to walk a ways to get to it. I'm just soaking in the smell. The sun's out, probably, assuming that next one doesn't hit us, which I don't think it will. It's pretty rare, honestly. The, the rule of thumb here at the ranch, this is straight west, okay? And when you see something building in the west and you're like, oh man, hope that hits us like, like in drought years, you know, in the past, you're like, oh yeah, that's a big one coming. They usually either go and cut the mountain and go south or skirt the mountain to the north. So the ones that get you are the ones where you're like, Wait a minute, where'd that come from? Hey, how about this one? This was something cool Rooster just told me. Uh, he had a little breakdown with the swather that required a uh, two-person fix. And I was way out on the east end. And he's like, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get this together by myself. I might need you to come in. 
And of course I'm way out here. And I'm just getting my groove on cutting. I was like, uh, you know, Freddy's around. Freddy's there. If you can grab Weed Man. He's like, oh yeah, yeah. So he grabs Freddy anyway. They get the swather fixed back up, but it was one of the skid plates under the header that had come off. And needed to be kind of tweaked back into place. Anyway, Rooster tells me, man, Freddy, Freddy's really, really good hand. And I've always felt this way about Freddy, but uh, he's kind of more coming into it. I guess as he's getting older, he's getting really big and strong. Like he's big, like his hands are as big as mine now. Rooster tells me, he goes, I, I told Freddy, you know, what good help he was. And he, <laughs> Freddy responds, well, it's because my dad makes me do everything he does with him. I'm not saying that's to toot my horn, but what I am trying to illustrate is that your kids don't become great workers or great, you know, students or, you know, great humans on their own. It, they don't just magically become that. Um, they take a lot of work and a lot of development. You can't, you can't skip out on that, you guys. You cannot skip out on that. You have to put the time in. You have to take them along. You have to pause and teach. You have to pause and lead, okay? You have to. It's not convenient, it's not easy all the time, but it's so worth it. And as these kids get older, you start to see, this is the first time where I'm like, hey, there's like a direct fruit of me taking time to show Freddie everything I do and, you know, shop stuff and things like that. And here now, you know, he's so helpful to Rooster. And, and Freddie recognized that and shared that. Hey, I was from my dad making me do everything he does with him, you know. So let that just be a kind of a neat little note to you parents out there. Please raise your kids. Please raise them. Put in the work. Put in the work. Put your efforts into your kids. They'll pay great dividends. I've noticed that I've seen a few pictures before where I'm like, hey, that looks like a Montana sky. And then sure enough, it is. It just, it did, I don't, and I don't know why. Why does Montana make skies look so big? Look at that. Look at that. It's just like, whoa. All right, just got off the phone with OMR. You guys know who OMR is? It's a person, not a place. OMR is Old Man Rooster. <laughs> anyway, he, uh, he wants to wait an hour, so. I concur with his hypothesis. No. Well, y'all remember what I was just saying about usually, you know, the storm, if it, you think it's coming, it's not going to come. Yeah, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely came for sure, but I'm not complaining. Like I told you, I'm never going to complain. Whatever. If the hay gets rained on a little bit, whatever. Whatever. What do we got going on here? an upside okay here's the upside to this giant blast of rain sure we got a bunch of uh, hay knocked down right now that's getting rained on yeah yeah but here's the thing our uh, our hay is for ranch cows anyway it's not like it has to be some high fancy hay the other thing was we just moved cows off of this pasture right out here <laughs> look at the driveway we just moved cows off of this pasture onto a new one and now this pasture just got bombed with moisture. So this whole pasture, which held the cows for almost a month, is gonna all regenerate and have a whole nother month's worth of feed ready to go at the end of July. So it's an upside. Well, it's morning time. We're ripping, we're ropping, we're rolling. Um, we're just back to it. Gonna be 80 degrees and breezy today. Great, great hay and weather. Great hay and weather. I've got a special ride along with me today. Oh, Lash came out for a little round or two or 10 or 12 or... The thing about when you end up coming out to ride and learn, you end up kind of out here for a while until somebody has the niceness to bring us some food or something to drink or something. <laughs> but Lash comes up with this idea. What is it, Lashy? To make hay. 
kids along teach them the ways I'm not just doing this as like a hey, showing off look at my kid um, I needed to get some good some good video so Lash uh, gave her a little instruction she's taking over um, when you're running this machine stay a little bit here to the left look behind you on the corners you gotta turn a little wide you have to you're kind of breaking the rules on the corner you don't have to worry about the window so just look back there at the swan side turn a little wide then once you get around the corner Back on the center here. See that? So, uh, there's no, this machine, there's a lot to run on this when you're turning around. When you get on the straights and you're just running back and forth, uh, nice, quiet, simple, great opportunity for someone like Lash, who uh, you just turned how old? Oh, August, that's right. <laughs> it was Bama that just had the birthday. She's going to be 11 in August, so she's 10. But this is a great time. Start, start teaching this stuff. She came out, was nice enough to come right along, wanted to see how things were going, and uh, get them used to it, get them comfortable with it. Um, of course, I, I got to take over at the bottom here and flip the machine around and everything, but this is where it starts, you guys. Whatever your trade is, whether you're a business person, whether you're an ag person, whatever the deal, get them involved. To our young center still, we find you at the spot. Feels not cut very much. So if it's getting off center, move a little to the right. There you go. And as you move to the right, you'll be able to look back and see it. Yep, so now you got a nice full swath again. There you go. So now it looks like here you want to stay just a little bit right instead of centering the windrow. Yeah, but you don't want to see down here with your big tire, you don't want to run it over. We're just barely running it over. So move just a tiny bit to the left. There you go. Perfect. When you're operating, uh, Lash is on her third full pass, which these are almost Oh, they're about three-quarter mile back and forth runs. So she's getting some good, uh, some good mileage. But when you're operating, you're always your eyes need to always be moving. You don't ever want to be fixed on something for more than just a few seconds. You know, down the down the down the windrow in front of us. What's my RPMs at? How's my water temperature? What's up in my mirror? What's over my shoulder? What's my uh, what's my PTO doing? How's my PTO RPMs? Am I missing any grass behind? Me? Does the machine sound like it always should sound and does sound? All these things, you just, you basically, you can think of it as you, you have all these checkpoints and they just become these things that you need to constantly cycle through and that's what keeps you uh, engaged and, and going and that's what separates a, an operator from just a typical uh, steering wheel holder or someone just taking up a seat. So keep going straight, now turn fast. Okay, good. Now straighten out fast. Nice. Perfect, look, no swatch. Yay. Hit the corner, just, just nailed it. <laughs> Do 
You guys last just left the biggest swatch in history. But she's was bigger. <laughs> so sometimes when you're swathing, you uh, if you get a little off track, you just leave a little, we call it a swatch, just a little sliver of hay that, you know, your hitter didn't quite get it all. You, you're taking a little too big of a bite that leaves this little strip uncut. <laughs> And Lash has only had one all day long, and we're on her last hundred yards before she goes in. Then she had a big one, and so I was razzing her about it. She's like, yours was way bigger than <laughs> All right, so Lash did like 10 of these rows, which equates to roughly 30, 30 bales. Sweet. Ooh, got a little pollen flying there. You see that haze? Just had a huge wind gust come storming through. <laughs> Glad I'm in here and not out there eating that pollen up. That'll get your allergies pumping, huh? Oh man, look at that. Just got the phone call from old Roostus. Said he's stuck. What do we got going on, Roost? <laughs> the hay is so deep, I can't see where I'm going, where I've been, or where I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> There's a little drainage, right? See where it goes like that? That drainage comes around through here and right down here, and then it gets really deep right here. Clear down in, so. We're just down in this little deal, so what we gotta do, we'll just back up. I'll pull him backwards. His header's just stuck on the ground. So we'll just pull him back. And he'll be able to just cut up. It's a little tricky. We got the A-team, <laughs> they brought us a chain out. Nice to have the boys around, of course, for stuff like that. Do a little chain run, have them bring out a chain. So I haven't had Freddie out uh, running this machine. As you saw, we had Lash doing it today. Um, she was excited. She did really good, and she hung with it. And after she'd been doing it for an hour and a half, um, I took back over because I had to make some new outside rounds to open up a new stretch. And after I got done with that, I said, all right, do you, uh, you want to go in or do you want to run it a little more? And she goes, I want to run some more. So she ran another, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. At which point I said, again, you know, do you want to get out now or later? And she goes, I'll make one more pass before I go in. Um, just really good, really good. Glad to see that. So Freddie, uh, Freddie's time to shine, of course, will be coming up in our next haying episode. He's become the main rake man. And when I say the main rake man, he's been willing and able last year to get age. Well, last year he would have been 11, yeah. So last year to go through the night with me, bale and hay, we had only like what one night or two maybe where we had enough hay that we bailed. But um, he stuck it with me. I, I told him I, he could go in and I could finish up that night last year. He's like, no, no, if you're out here, I'm out here. So anyway, he and I are gonna get uh, we're gonna get the baler and the rake together and serviced up, and uh, that'll be our adventure for tomorrow and the next day.